what's up guys shadow steel here welcome back to railwork sunday so this one's going to be a, a very interesting one for you guys uh just yesterday i posted a video on railroads online you can go check that out uh in the description below in the card or wherever i put it there but um I figured, since we were talking, like, since that is focused on real, uh, narrow gauge railroading in the American, uh, Colorado narrow gauge stuff, whatnot, I figured we'd take a look at the, uh, uh the, um, Rio Grande Southern route for Train Sim Classic. So we're going to be doing a long scenario, uh, called Lizardhead Freight. This is a two-parter, of course. Uh, not in the actual scenario, but in terms of the video, because I have to split this up into two parts. Last time I tried this, it took me three, uh, uh, like close to three hours to complete. So you got that going for you. <coughs> oh, that was fast. Are we rolling? All right. Oh, hello. Got train orders. All right. So we're gonna be taking some freight cards over Lizard over to Rico with a drop stop and. Um, uh, lizard head. All right. All right. Um, let the brakes hold. All right. So this is the K27, or Mud Hen, as they were typically called back in the day. K27s were also referred to as the Class 125s by the Dura uh, the Denver Rio Grande. Uh, and I say Denver Rio Grande because that was the original name that the railroad had prior to um, being bought, mer merged, like basically tra transformed into the Denver Rio Grande and Western. We're gonna get this going here. Open up the windows here. Move this over here. Try to get some steam pressure up here. And now we're getting this. <clears throat> right. Running, please, thank you, and move. I can see the belt moving over there, too. Got you in a fire. Alright, go ahead and close it. Oh, they didn't... Okay, I installed the patch, obviously, but, uh... I guess I didn't fix that lighting glitch on the... the rear of the... Yeah. Alright, here we go. Got a ways to go, you know? A little bit of a click there as you turn off the bell. That's interesting. And here we go. <clears throat> Got safeties again. Boost the regulator there. And are we hitting the grade? There we go. We're hitting the grade. Two percent. What I'm probably going to need to do is I'm going to start applying sand here soon because this locomotive is tends to struggle with its cargo. But she's a beaut- I, I honestly got to admit, like, while the model's not the greatest, it's not bad either. I do like I do like this um particular model here. I mean, these are the K27, so they're, like, the, they're the earliest versions of the, um, of the K-series that were introduced to the- Denver, Rio Grande, and Western later on. Uh, this is, this route set is, in, is set in the 1940s, and um, as such, you'll probably get um, and uh, as a result, they're um, it's pretty late into the era with the K27s. Most of them had been probably sidelined by the Denver, Rio Grande, and Western. Uh, and as you can see here, they were being operated by the Denver Rio Grande, the Rio Grande Southern, the sister, the, I guess you could say, bastard stepchild of the Denver Rio Grande Western. But they were kind of a mishmash railroad, uh, from what I've seen of them. I'm not even historically, like, from a historical point of view, okay, I'm gonna have to start putting in sand now. Because we're gonna need to put in, a hard work, whoa, god! There we go. Got it. <laughs> there goes the wheel slip. 
Wish we could have some better uh, sound effects for these locomotives here, but, um, you know, they, you gotta do what you gotta do. But, um, yeah, this is, um, these locomotives were, the Denver, the Rio Grande Southern, a, uh, was kind of a mishmash of railroading in the, uh, in that area. I can't get it through. A little tricky here. Uh, but, um, the railroad operated like a hodgepodge of equipment for a long time and um, eventually came into ownership of, well, the Denver, well, they eventually got abandoned. The railroad was eventually abandoned. Um, mainly because they didn't have like a, a bunch of revenue coming in here and there. What's interesting, though, is that they got a kind of a second revival towards the end of the towards the end of their life during World War II, of all things, because of Project Manhattan. They were actually they were actually in close proximity close proximity to several uranium mines that um, were were used in the in the two atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan. Now. What's even more interesting is that where I live, I live in the St. Louis area. Um, it's funny because that uranium ended up coming here to St. Louis via train and was developed into those atomic weapons. It was refined here in the St. Louis area to some extent and was later like built like it, like there it was the whole country that this bomb a, a single every part of that bomb had some part of it that was manufactured or built somewhere in the United States. Which was interesting. It's like one of the more interesting things about the the equipment, the bombs. Now, the the Rio Grande Southern, of course, having that last gasp of like revenue service, it didn't end well for them, obviously. The railroad filed for abandonment in the 1950s. Um, some of their, a, a lot of their equipment was safe, like a lot of their older, like all, all, pretty much all the steam locomotives were, by that time, by that time were all leased from other railroads, so most of them were saved. Uh, we know that there is a K-27 over at Coombrace and Toltec that was, um, I believe was on the roster of the Rio Grande Southern. Uh, we also know that Locomotive number 20, Rio Grande Southern number 20, is also in preservation. Uh, she is actually probably the one of the oldest Rio Grande Southern locomotives to sa be saved. And, um, yeah, a bunch of, like, at least two K-27s have been preserved, so we do have examples of those two. Which is good, actually. You got, like, you have, like, the Class 125, essentially. That's what these locomotives started out as. These started out as class 125s. N named of what the reason for that classification by, by the Denver Rio Grande was actually because of the weight of the locomotive. The locomotive was was weighted was rated at 120 125 tons. Pretty significant for a locomotive of that uh, that era because these were in the 1900s when they were built. I believe they also, uh, I want to say they originally had Stevenson valve gear, but I could be wrong on that. But, um, yeah, these were locomotives that, at this point in time in the history of the, the railroad, whoa, I just whipped the camera around like that, uh, for these locomotives. Like, these locomotives, like, the fact that we had two preserved and are in, in operation, by the way, like, that stands, like, that's pretty impressive, because... Not very many of these 1920s, 1900s, like 1900s locomotives really are in still in still operating condition. They're either museum displays, or in some cases, like set up for tour stop, like smaller tour stop operations because they're just so light and weak. But these locomotives are probably one of the just as strong, pretty strong for their their age, being outside frame locomotives. I need to start uh, putting more coal in the fire. We're starting to. Oh, we are popping the safeties, actually. We're fine. I put a little bit of coal in the fire, trying to conserve that. But, um, interestingly enough, K-27s, as they stand right now, are 
like a good transitional locomotive in terms of the transition from the Victorian era, which Railroads Online is set in, to the modern day steam locomotives that we see today, especially on the, the Durango and Silverton and Coombrays and Toltec. Both those railroads still operate these old workhorses quite well, and I'm actually excited that Machine Rails is actually building, uh, like, has the Eureka and Palisade. I think it's pa Palisade. That's it. Eureka and Palisade. Um, number four, the Eureka, in the works for TS, so I would love to actually operate uh, that locomotive over this route. It's kind of like a ref. Uh, kind of a nice little transitional period. I would also love it. Like, I've seen some people starting to use um, the Colorado Southern's Georgetown Loop route for the passenger equipment because Rio Grande Southern did have some passenger services during the during their le later years. They're mostly operated by Galloping Goose look, diesel rail car truck things with. Pretty much all of them being preserved, by the way. Those galloping geese are still out there, still operating, and you can find videos of them operating on tourist operations like the Cumbres and Toltec and the Colorado Railroad Museum. So it is interesting to think that these locomotives, like much of the narrow gauge equipment in Colorado, has been preserved at one time or another. So that's actually pretty cool, in my opinion. Now, I'm trying to maintain speed here, but I, I, like, if you haven't noticed, when I started the scenario, the scenario was actually already completed. I already did a test run of this scenario, and I did say it took me about two, three hours, officially two and a half by, by the time I checked. But yeah, this was one of those scenarios that, like, I knew once I started it, I, this, I was all in. I had to go in all the way to essentially, like, complete it. To complete it, it would take me three hours, and that is going to be a long, a long haul here. Because we're going to have to do some switching, too. So at the, at the rear end of the consist, if I actually get off the locomotive here, we'll let him roll away. So there he goes. So at the tail end of the consist here, you actually see some uh, livestock cars. Stock cars. These cars right here, the back end here... That's actually being dropped off at uh, Lizardhead. I also like the fact that the freight cars have modern freight sounds. That's a little funny to me. But, uh, yeah, that's... I mean, it's not much... You can't really do much about the sounds in this game. Not much you can do. Hello. Oh, yeah, yeah. I pr I'm pretty sure you heard the buzz of my phone down there. Let operate. Let, I'm pretty sure we have some speed maintaining here. Uh. Uh. There we go. I had to mention, like, okay. oh, we're slowing down a bit. I thought we were picking up speed. No, we're slowing down. Losing boiler pressure, though. I should put some more coal in there. Yeah, I see it now. I see now. So we're going to have to be constantly shoveling coal to get this locomotive up to grade. Oh, uh, here. <sighs> All right. Oh, the game's freaking out. <laughs> of course the game freaks out now. Uh, okay, there it goes. Good lord. Alright, get some coal in there and try and build up boiler pressure here. I might actually have to blow, use the blower to get the, get, a, get some steam pressure going. We're kind of like slowing down here. There we are. That's uh, th that's our next stop there. That's where we have to go through. I'll turn off the cab light here. There we go. Run a little bit of pressure. I'm going to put the blower on and see if we can get some more blower pressure in. 
No, that's not gonna work. We might stop at the town here for a second to actually get our boiler pressure back up because we're gonna stall here. That's kind of a good view. Yeah, we're slowing down. Our locomotive brake is off, right? Yeah, the locomotive brake is off. We want to make sure that we're not going to slot, or like, basically stall out here. Might actually need to pull to a stop here to kind of get our train back up the grade here. Yeah, we're slowing. We're losing boiler pressure. Oh, nope, never mind. There we go. We're building back up. Okay. There we go. So we're going to... Hopefully, build up enough boiler pressure to actually get up to speed here. There, there, it's, it's going now. There it goes. It's going to take a bit, obviously. I used to have a program, by the way, that allowed, uh, allowed me to actually see where the where the train was going in real on a real life map but i don't know if that works anymore and we are slowing down like a fucking ugh. all right give it a bit more regulator here 55 hopefully that gives us a little bit of speed here no we definitely don't have a lot of boiler pressure to work with here All right, we're building boiler pressure back up, but that's that's gonna take some time. By the way, let me down, know down in the comments if you want me to use that map from now on. It's an old map program that I had a long time ago with my older videos where it showed the train's progress throughout the route. And, um... This was a long time ago. It used to be like this. The, the the way my videos used to be structured was so cluttered. It looked like a streamer overlay, and like one third of the video was covered up by um like just various various crap. And I um eventually I was told like several got some feedback from a friend of mine. I got a I got feedback from a friend of mine, basically saying like. Yeah, I can't even see the video all that well because you've got like half this stuff cluttered on the side here. I'm like, well, yeah, you do have a good point there. It looks more like a... And the funny thing is, like, Railworks Sundays as a series actually started about because of Train Sim Live. It was a series on, like, a series, um, a, one of the developers for Train Simulator, um, Matt, Matt Bettleston, uh, actually used to do. I don't know if he still does it anymore, but I doubt, in fact, I doubt it because he's not really in the, really doing anything aside from being a, the main developer for Train Sim World. And even then, like, his stuff is, like, very few and far between. Okay, we are still struggling up the grade here, but we're loading up the coal here and we're getting some boiler pressure back up. Let me see if I can get the blower going and see if we can get some more steam pressure going. There we go. There we go. I do like the looks of this area. It looks beautiful, honestly. That's a, is that a switch? What is that? Hold on. Oh, that's just a bridge. A little ditch crossing there. That's cool. Good shot of this one. That looks cool. <laughs> I I gotta admit I do love this route for what it is. I really do like it. I, I just it, it's kind of dis disappointing that the locomotives look the way they do and stuff like that. Like it's not bad. It's not great. 
it's like if you're getting this just for the locomotive, eh, I pity you. But at the same time, like these are beautiful. Like this scenery is amazing. It's absolutely stunning. I really do enjoy it. Like I running through the mountains like this and getting a good look at the scenery. I mean the th the thumbnail alone. The thumbnail the thumbnail that I got for this video. Like it was gorgeous. I couldn't help but have to use that for the thumbnail. And um it's just it was just one of those situations I looked at it like holy crap. This is gorgeous. And they really did something with this route. Like, it really is a matter of just, like, this is stunning. You've done a... Like, these people... Like, Milepost Simulations has had a tendency to do this quite a bit. Where they have actively, like, done a lot of work on the detail of an area. Not so much the locomotives, honestly. I mean, most of the locomotives in their rolling stock... Like, the, lo the rolling stock in particular. I can tell these the rolling stock here was cut, like custom built just for this route but the locomotives themselves like keep in mind this is not the first k27 we've had in railworks we had another k27 with the durango and silverton route that was uh donation wear for the most part but um but yeah it was just one of those like you had some stuff for it actually now that i think about it that donation wear i could use that because I actually bought that that stuff. The cars look decent and stuff. So I could probably use that for this route and kind of have it look good for the passenger equipment. But still, like it was one of those situations where the um with the basic look of the route, like it's gorgeous. It's, like the scenery and everything, especially when you get in the mountains like this. And um I yeah, I just like like you like, it's incredible, like, how detailed everything is and ever like that. We're coming up to our first, like, what the heck? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey! First crossing. Got to sound the whistle here. If you're a little too quick on the whistle there, it kind of freaks out like that, but eh. Also, I believe that's a, a Redding T1, the Redding T1 2102's whistle, rather than the um, Durango and Silverton's whistle. Which, I'm not exactly complaining, but it's kind of like, okay, I mean, that sounds close. But yeah, I don't think this whist that whistle is actually part of the Durango and Silverton. Got a water tower coming up here. The coal out there. We're starting to slow down again because we're losing boiler pressure as we fill up the tender here. I'm going to shut this down for a little bit. See if we can get the boiler pressure back up. Oh, that's another good shot here. Hold on. This looks like it's out of the Cumbres and Toltec. There we go. Got it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, I was zoomed. Okay, I was zoomed a little bit. Okay. I was wondering if I was zoomed in or not. Just gotta make sure I keep the gradient up, you know? Or the speed up here. Because, like, I want to get this done as fast as possible, but I also don't want to, like, take my time. Like, to go too fast. It's kind of a balancing act if you go up this grade. It is interesting to think, though, that there is not, like, there is, um, wait, is that, wait a minute, 4101, 0401, is that the one that's over at the Colorado Railroad Museum? If this is the one that's over at the Colorado Railroad Museum, I'd be shocked. I gotta look that up again because I know that there's one of the one of those cabooses is preserved at the Colorado Rail. This one of these cabooses is preserved at the Colorado Railroad Museum. And if this is the particular caboose that, like the particular number of the caboose that was preserved, that's interesting because I know that that the caboose is lettered for the Denver Rio Grande West, not the Denver Rio Grande Southern. Why did I say Denver? Ah, whatever. It's good enough. 
got another, uh, we got a 10 mile an hour speed limit coming up. So this is the first major bridge that we're going to come across here. Um, so we're going to kind of cut down, on, like, well, we'll keep our speed up here. Uh, kind of up to, up to the, whoop, there goes some wheel slap. That was interesting. Uh, safeties are not going off anymore. Reduce boiler, oh, reduce that. Put the water in the boiler. Keep the blower on as much as you can. We need the, we need water. We, we, this locomotive is a very fuel hungry locomotive, honestly. I gotta admit. Alright, here we come. So, I believe this is the area where I took the screenshot in. Uh, the one that's actually uh, featured on the bit, on the bit, on the thumbnail here. Let me see here. Yeah, this is the one. This is the, this is the first of the, yeah, because I remember I took the screenshot here. Alright, there we go. Alright, we're good. I do like these bridges here, I gotta admit. They're very beautiful. Gotta... And listening to... Well, you know... Goes. There we go. Pass the camera. We're probably speeding a little bit here. I can hear just from the chops. She's a little faster than we want her to be. But like that's fine. Like I, I managed to complete the scenario with a thousand points earlier. So I'm not too worried about it. This is, a, this is a very fun scenario to operate, you know? It's very fun. It's very nice. Oh, okay. That's fun. Now, we're coming up to the first major the first major town here, I believe here, right? About two miles, two and a half miles out. See the boiler pressure kind of building up again, so that's good. I'll just open her up a little bit more. That's the whistle, right? Yeah. Where's the headlight? There's the headlight there. Is. I do like the ambient glow of the cab light. That's nice. And keep that fire going. Uh, because I know for a fact that if I, like, if I lose well, the boiler pressure, I'm going to slow down significantly again. Alright, easy does it. And we'll stop for water at the first major stop. The first, like, we're meeting up with a freight just up ahead of us, too, after this town. So we're going to stop for some fuel, too. Yeah. Yeah, pick up water. So, that'll be about six miles out, so we're gonna be good for that. And then we're gonna be dropping off the caboose at Lizard Head, way down there, about 10 miles. Is that 10 or 20? 10. Okay. We got quite a bit of ways to go. But Lizard Head Pass is gonna be the halfway point of this scenario. We'll try and keep our boiler pressure of water up here as we go up the grade. We have dropped our boiler pressure significantly just by filling up the tender boiler with water. I didn't even notice that. All right, stop with the water. And I got the blower too, actually. So we've got plenty of water in the boiler now. We got about 80% of it in the water in the tent in the boiler here. Um, one fun fact about this um, route, or specifically the locomotives, 
their water level actually changes depending on which way they're going in terms of the gradient. So the reason we have, like, so we currently have 80% of the, um, so we currently have an 80%, well, about 80% of the, well, 77% of the boiler water level filled up now. And, um, that is actually because all of it's toward the back end of the locomotive. So the water glass is actually re reference like, so it's basically informing you, like, okay, so this is what the water glass is showing. Kind of cool that they actually modeled that to some extent. Now, the only other locomotive DLCs that I know that do this to, to some extent is actually Smokebox. And I do know that Smokebox worked on the braking for these locomotives. They actually, he's actually, that's why I got the brakes on here at running. Is because um, that's kind of the operating procedure for these locomotives. Locomotives are when you set the brakes to running, you, they actually operate quite nicely and everything like that. Put on some more water here. Uh, where, uh, where's the tan at? There it is, right over there. I can't say. Two miles out, right? Yeah, exactly two miles. Nice, we did well with that. Gradient still at 3.1%. This is insane. This is probably one of the steepest points on the route. Like, between here and Lizard Head, essentially. Because it's, like, super, super steep. Like, really insanely steep. If you do it, but if you handle your train just right, you actually can get a decent run at the, tra the tracks here and everything. Uh, here we go. This is the view I wanted to see. It. All right. Imagine this locomotive in tra uh, railroads online. Honestly, I'm not sure if people would like it or hate it, but you know, we're gonna cut the boil water off there for a little bit and get the locomotive up to speed here. You gotta cut down like every so often. You gotta cut down the throttle just a little bit to gain boiler pressure back up after using the water. Which is interesting. This is also the first time I've actually operated the locomotive without popping the safety valves repeatedly. So the update has affected it to some extent. I'm gonna turn on the blower here, see if I can get some more steam pressure going up here. There we go. as much steam pressure as you can, buddy. So there's our town right over there. <sighs> oh, boy. Supposedly there was a glitch with this route when it first released um, where um, I can go ahead of this locomotive. I don't know where the town is exactly. Well, there's one of the bridges. So the town's way over there. Okay. Is that a waterfall? It is. Well, that's interesting. Huh. I... Uh... Yeah, this doesn't look great. Probably one of the few things I would could, I could do without. Like, you could probably do something better than that. There she is. I hear her. I don't see her. You could probably do with a couple fishermen just sitting out here or something like that. Nice little view out there. Now we're running low on boiler pressure. We're, now we're kind of like hitting the wall here. Blower back on here. I had to turn on the fan on my, in my room because I'm sweating. Okay, so brake pipe is at 70. So we're not actually slowed or anything like that. So we got a significant amount of boiler pressure going on here. We got another uh, switch up there, honestly. 
Oh, well, that looks interesting. Where are you? Wait. Oh. There you are. You took a while. What is this place? Wind, po Windy Point, eh? Start cutting down the throttle here a little bit. Try and get them water in the boiler. Actually, we're gonna go in the caboose here. Well, not that view. Not that view. Their view. Got the uh, hill coming up here. Grade is still at three percent, eh? It's not too bad. It's pretty significant here. I don't know if we're gonna shell out here anytime soon. There goes the boiler pressure. I'm gonna lower that a little bit so I can actually get more boiler pressure in there. We're going through the ten percent, the ten mile an hour limit here, so. Oh lordy. Are we still picking up speed here? Oh, we've our grades have reduced here a little bit. That's good. Gives us a little bit of chance to pick up lower our speed here a little bit. There we go. Going over the bridge there. You can't see the locomotive over there. I do like the view of the caboose, honestly. I really do. We need to put more coal in there so we can actually keep the boiler pressure going up, so... We're speeding now. And we're over the bridge here. Is that a jolt? I felt some. I noticed something on the car there. Oh, it's a three percent now. Twisting and turning, honestly. You gotta admit, I gotta admit, this route is beautiful, honestly. It's very nice. If we can get the boiler water level up and everything, we shouldn't be too bad. Lights are not the greatest, but you know, it's something. My dog's just barking. There goes the safety. Safety's popping. That's good. That's a good sign. Alright. Still lowering the boiler pressure there. Wait, hang on. <coughs> ah, crap. It's spring. Alright, here we go. Now we're picking up a little bit of speed. Keep up, maintain speed and everything. We should be good. How far are we? About a mile, less than a mile out. Less than half a mile, actually. So I'm going to go ahead of the train here. It looks like we're still picking up speed, even with the reduced, with the reduced reverser. So I probably was wasting boiler pressure that entire time. There we go. Now supposedly there's not, like I believe uh what's it uh there you are. Oh, okay, that explains it. Oh. Oh, so this is the glitch they're talking about. This woman just freaks the hell out and just runs back and forth. Oh, there goes a car. I just got hit by the car there, buddy. But yeah, she is pacing back and forth. That is actually the glitch they refer... Like, this is one of the glitches I heard about. 
I like how the cars have just modern. Why are they going so fast? That poor lady. The whistle post over there. Oh, over by the bridge, actually. That's the bridge. So you gotta sound the whistle in the bridge and everything. So what is this? Uh, of Ofer, right? Yeah, Ofer. So yeah, supposedly she will just wa wander back and forth like this until you get... Yep, there we are. Well, she almost did it. Like, supposedly she'll wander back over to the car once you get close enough. Lower the boiler... Like the uh, reverse uh, thrall here, trying to get us back to normal. Is she going? No, no. I, I believe this is technically classified as a platform too, so she might actually be a platform, like a person on a platform here. Which is why she's freaking the hell out because there's not actually like a designated platform bit or something like that. <coughs> there's our boil. There's our steam. There's our smoke. We see smoke. Zoom in here, trying to get a good look at the whole she can fly. Rides along. Oh, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. There she goes. I probably should have turned off the head for this, but oh well, that's fine. I'll do another shot with this later. Whoops. She's still moving around like this. Get to your car, lady! There she goes! Or not. Okay, interesting. I mean, she uh, Well, I guess I just spawned in. Yeah, she is freaking the hell out. Water level at 80. That's funny. And we are clear to proceed to Trout Lake. I'll probably get another vi uh, another shot of that later. Without the HUD, of course. I could do some editing to kind of get the, the HUD off the way, but no. Oh. Mile post 45. All right. Her blower is on. No, her blower is not on. Shut down the throttle a bit there, buddy. Let me go in the little chapa. <laughs> I can't talk sometimes, you know? Boiler, pretty high up here. I'm gonna try and get as much water in the boiler as possible as we approach the new state, the next stop here. It's kind of difficult to figure out the speed here. Oh, God. Ugh. What's going on here? Oh god. Oh
Pick up speed again. We are 87% in the boiler, so that's good. 67, 61 in the firebox. Our bullet, our, our um, safeties are going off repeatedly again. That's good. I should probably increase the reverser here a little bit so I can actually get some more. Um, Cause we're at a point now where I do want to make sure we don't have the black, the um, safety going off too much. They're almost at 90% in the boiler there, which is good. Let's save this again. I want to try and get as much water in the boiler as possible as we uh, get to our first water stop here. You will be taking, stopping at Trout Lake for a water and a meat with a livestock train for Livestock Extra 452. Alright. I don't know how we had radios back then. Like that would have been only communicated through the radio or whatnot. All right, that's really enough water in the boiler there. I'm probably gonna have to put more water in the boiler later, but eh, you know, we've got enough water in there right now. And as long as we don't, like, we're nearing the top of the grade here, because after this, we are gonna be heading up about another uh, four miles, is it? Three miles to Lizardhead Pass, so we won't be that long. We actually warrant the water usage here. Yeah, what I'm gonna do here because we are actually all right. A lot of bridges here. Bridge budget must be up high. All right, and we've cleared that. Um, I'm gonna keep putting coal in the fire here. Ow. Alright. So 88 already here with the boiler water level A. Alright, go ahead and start putting water in the boiler again. Right, there's enough coal in there. We're fine. Still has a glitch there, interestingly enough. Initially, when you close the firebox door, there should not be a glow back there. But they have, um... Uh, and they released this patch on Facebook, so it wasn't finalized by, um... By Dovetail Games. That's why I'm using the whistle and everything. Now, by the time this comes out, the patch might be out by now. By now or at least, uh, probably out by part two. But, who knows. Uh, okay, we can pick up speed here. Open her up! Yeah, I'm gonna reduce the reverser here a little bit. More coal in there. I do, I really do like this look, I really do. It's a very beautiful, very nice looking look, Got a couple of signals coming up there. of signals for referencing the track condition up there. And we've got about three miles to go before I stop here. Shut that off. Doing quite well. The gradient's actually reduced itself a little bit. 2.7 rather than the 3% we were challenging with, being challenged with earlier. And we are still picking up speed, even though we're putting in wa water in the boiler here. That's cool. Alright. 
right. Pick up speed here. Still pick up speed. The whistle post coming up in about a quarter mile. Now, once we get to Trout Lake, then we're going to fill up our boiler up here. I uh, don't know where that's at exactly here. There it is. Uh, about half a mi two and a half miles out, eh? Picking up a lot of speed here. Trying to blow the whistle from inside the cab this time. Fred Fredberger. <laughs> All right, put some more coal in there. Now we're just maintain, trying to maintain the coal level at about 50 or 60, rather. Whoop. Here, check the side. We're picking up a lot of speed here. There's the whistle post. I always blast it too early. There we go. We got it. Is there another one up there? Oh, we're at 16 miles an hour here. That's a little fast. Ninety-five, that's enough water. Jesus. That is actually a lot of water for this locomotive here. What's that? Cylinder cock. Okay. That's what that is. Alright. Where do we got? About two miles. Whew. Oh god. Doing quite well. Now we're gonna hit that off here as well. Keep it moving here. I just had a lubricator. Easy does it. Picking up a little bit of speed here. I'm going to get out the cab window here. Yes. Alright, so there's Trout Lake. About two miles out. We're going to pick up some... We're going to... Uh, try not to speed too much, but I want to be at top speed here. Okay. Wondering where that was. Is the roof and openable? Okay, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Where's the roof at? Wait. That's weird. That's the whistle, right? That's the... No, that's the bell. Ah, there it is. Okay, so the roof vent doesn't open. Good to know.
about one and a half miles left. Just count the miles now at this point. Holy crap, we pick up speed fast. Ah, there it is, right there. Trout Lake's up ahead. A little bit of further along the line here. We should be able to see the other locomotive over here. We're meeting up with the train. So there's Trout Lake right there. There it is. There you are, buddy. He's waiting at the switch already for us. So yeah, he's already in operation, so he should be moving. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, the cat, the cattle cars, the livestock trip cars and everything, they actually moo. So if you actually wait long enough, they'll actually make a sound and everything. So that's fun. Oh, yep, there they are. Yeah. We're gonna wait here for our train. Another, there's another a there's a uh, another whistle place over there. Uh, not sure how far we are, honestly. I thought we were a lot closer than this. Where are we? How far are we? Point seven, eh? No, just a mile out. It's a mile out. Okay. Still got a ways to go. Still a ways out here. Yeah, you can't hear the whistle from here. And the grade is actually pretty shallow enough where we're actually getting speed with just half of the reverser here and everything. Grand Locomotive. Oh, you hear him? I hear him. They're chuffing off in the distance there. That's funny. Yes, we're well aware, cows. You're going to be slaughtered. Stop it! I'm talking. Enough boiler water, water in the boiler. About, uh, about three quarters of a mile. Stopping for water here. So we need to be prepared to break. Now you can hear the whistle. There's the, there it is, right there. Fill the boiler up again. I want to make sure we're at a high enough uh, boiler water level that we can actually, like, just fill up the tank and not have to worry about the boiler, the uh, water level in the tender for too much. Oh, there we are! <laughs> Lower the speed here. See us off in the distance there. That's funny. How do we pick up speed? That's enough coal in there. Hold. Here we come. 
I think that's the right whistle code. Not sure. Alright, we got enough water in the boiler there. Switch now. Little meetup. He'll be departing in a second as soon as we clear the switch there. There he goes. He should be clearing. There he goes. Whoops, that was not right. All right, there we go. Whoopsie. Oh, God. Oh, we pass it. Damn it. All right. Will that work? That'll work, right? Nope, it won't. Roll backwards a little bit there, buddy. Brakes! And we're rolling too fast. Well, no matter. Thank you. Water. <laughs> we need the water! Uh, that's enough of that, and that's enough of that. Alright, get the reverser back up to 70 here, because we're going to need a part in grand fashion. Alright, the are open. Look one looks good, let's go. Wait for the brakes to release. Go to Lizard Head. How far is that actually? I can find it. There it is, right over there. Three miles? Alright, that's not too bad. Pretty good. Right. 
once we get that all done, then that's the end of part one, essentially. Right? Yeah, about. I mean, I could speed up here and get this ahead of schedule, but no. Alright, here we go. We're actually doing quite well. I do like this, um, the speed we're going here. Kind of. So now we're on kind of the, the base of the mountains here. Not exactly at the peak of the mountains, but you know, we're pretty... Pretty significantly high up. I like the fact that there's brush and tr grass and everything just covering up the tracks a little bit. I do like that. All right, we got a ways to go here before we reach our next destination here. So, there it is right there. Got about three miles to go. And then after that, we are gonna be going through Coke, Coke Ovens. About 11 miles away from that. Okay. Using up a, what the hell happened? Oh yeah, the, we're going up right now. water kind of drained up a little bit. That's the, that's what I was referring to with the water level. Now we're speeding. We're going with gas. Alright. This is an end end trip. Alright. Yep. Dropping up the suck cars over at Blizzard Head. I mean, now that being docked for speeding, that's interesting. I guess it's just a suggestion at the end of the day. That's certainly interesting. Boy level, water level is at 80, so that's good. Oh, God. There we go, over the bridge. Still lowering in speed, but we're still keeping up there as well. There we go. Alright. Take a look here. Is there actual other views too? Or just the caboose view? Nope, just the caboose view. Yeah, just from the view of the caboose. Why are we picking up speed again? Nice view. Kayla and Charlie. Alright. Are we just on level track? Is that what's... Oh, okay. I put up the throttle just a tad more and it freaks the game out. I'm gonna lower the reverse for a little bit here. There we go. Got it. Now we're in a 2% grade. Now we need to pick up the speed. Alright. There we go. Whew. Do some switching over a lizard head here. Enough water in the boiler there. Stage is going off, right? Yeah, look at there. How far are we? I keep checking. I can just look on the HUD here. Two miles out exactly. Cool.
pick lot, pick a uh, good distance there. Yeah, about two miles out. Going through an S bend here. I want to take a good screenshot here. I got speed again. Damn it. <laughs> I go. Nice little ice bend there. All right, we're still going up the the mountain here, but uh, we'll be going downhill soon enough. About uh, one and a quarter, one and three quarters of a mile before we reach Lizard Head. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to split this video up into two parts, obviously, because I am looking at the recording time. We're at like two, uh, uh hour and a half, yeah, hour and fifteen minutes in, which is about what I did, which is about where I was last time with this scenario, about the same amount of time. And we're gonna be traveling all the way to the other end of the route, which again is gonna be another hour and a half. Judging by the speed here. If we maintain the water in the boiler there and everything, we should be good though. Yeah, there's Lizard Head right over there. Lizard Head being the top of the grade there. So we won't be too long before we'll need to start actually applying brakes and everything up to go down grade. I'm in the grade here. We're not far from it though. I'm gonna go take a look up ahead. Train runner. Oh. Love using the HUD here. Ditch crossing over there. Bridge. Yeah, mile plus 52. I gotta zoom out so I can actually see what I'm doing. Now we're at 62, 16 miles an hour again. Damn it, I keep doing this. I keep picking up too much speed. There's Lizard Head. Big old snow sheds and everything. Not bad. So we're going to be stopping here. Alright, that's enough coal in the fire there. We don't need that much coal. Here's the locomotive off in the distance there. So we're going to be um, stopping with the caboose over here in this little parking spot there onto the main. And then what we're going to do is we're going to unhook it with the handbrakes on, of course, because we need to put the handbrakes on before we actually move away from it, because if we don't leave the handbrakes on, we're going to fly fling that caboose down the tracks down there. The snow shed. I like the snow shed, honestly. I, I wish this was a... Uh, a, uh, what's it? What's the word for it? Loft. That's it. A loft. And I, I, I could use it on my own route, but eh, whatever. I'm sure I could make something like that. Or have somebody make it. Where are we on the map exactly? So that's where... Okay, we're not far from it. Gotta go around this little curve here, this little hillside, and be on our way. Then once we get that done, we're all the way downhill, all the way back down to 
Rico, which is all the way down here. And there's Rico right there. Now, keep in mind, we started the scenario way up here. Um, right here. This is where we started the freaking scenario. We've traveled the, about ha almost the entire length of the route getting here. So that's actually very impressive. I gotta admit that. <clears throat> and I proceed to sing un undefeatable. Or Hummud, rather. Alright, there we go. Coming from the top of the grade here. I'm actually going to turn off the water there. Kind of cut down on the throttle here, too. Three percent still, eh? This is what we're going to do. We're going to put our caboose view over here. I don't mind the track. The track's a little weird, but you know, it's not bad either. So we have a small window of where we can put the caboose, honestly. That's that's great. Blech. Put some more coal in there. Wish you could lean off to one side and see what's ahead of you. So, once we drop the, these cars off, then we're going to be going on to Rico. So, that's going to be a long trip there. That's going to be part two. <laughs> got to admit. Beautiful route, honestly. Got to admit. It's not as far as a sighting. Should be a destination. It looks like it's a destination rather than a sighting. <sighs> oh boy. Oh, uh, I am not in running, so I haven't been charging the brakes at all. Well, overcharging, rather. Old lap. And you see how the grade just dips right there, so we'll need to be um, on our toes as we approach. Uh, lizard head fast here. Oh, I put it in an emergency. Yeah, you can see that the water dropped down from, like, 90 to 70 right there, so that is definitely, uh, like, good. All we gotta do is keep her just off the switch here. Yeah, we can pull forward a little bit more. Brakes release here. Holy crap! All right, apply local on the brake just to make sure we're good. We don't want to be rolling backwards here too much, anyway. Hold lap. All right. All right. So, we've arrived at our, des our well, the Caboose's destination here. I want to make sure we are clear to get through the switch here. Yes, we are. 
All right, so the switch there is clear. We're clear of the switch, so this caboose is right in where it needs to be. All right, so apply handbrakes on the caboose there. Apply the handbrakes. And uh, what I'm gonna do here, this little trick I believe still works. So, release the logo on the brake. And unhook the car. Open her up. And in theory, we should be able to move with the brakes fully applied like this. Oh, right, we need like full reg too. Yep, it works. <laughs> it freaking works. It, in the words of Todd Howard, it just works. <laughs> this is not how a steam locomotive works. That is not how that works. You are not able to, you should not be able to move your train that strongly with your reverse, <laughs> like everything like this. What the hell? Stop there, good. Get the switch there. Should be lined in correctly there. Uh, reverse her back down and reverse. Reverse, reverse. Oh yeah, that's right. Because we're on a uh, downhill, the downhill is assisting us, but the uphill is not. So go release the brakes here for a second. Kind of back it up here. Get it moving. And then release. Whoops, there we go. Run through the snowshed here. Again, in theory. Should, in theory, be able to drop these cars off quite nicely without, um, you know, derailing the whole thing. So, we'll save. here. Got the end of track right there. What's funny is that we do have a bit of brake brakes on. We'll apply more brakes here as we approach. Hold. Alright, we're good. Alright, we've brake broke. Uh, but we appear to be moving. All right. <laughs> we moved a slight tad, but that's fine. Why the handbrakes on those cars there? And let's see. That is the last car there, correct? Number five five seven one nine. The car depart. Yep. All right. Car seven five seven one nine has been braked. All right. Handbrakes are applied. Holes in the fire. We don't need this anymore. Go ahead and um, unhook. Brakes on. There we go. Pull forward. There we go. Did quite well there.
now we need to get clear of the switch and actually pick up the caboose. And we'll be on our way to Rico. But supposedly the curves on the Ys here are a bit too tight, so the locomotives will derail if you speed too much on them. I do like the view the fact that they actually have the lighting working on it. Make sure we're aligned correctly here. All right, easy does it. My brakes. Hold lapped. Put the switch there. We're lined correctly, and we're good. Get her back it up. Not that fast, buddy. Brakes have been released. The locomotive is backing up here properly. Now, I believe the backing speed on the on American trains is about 2.5 miles per hour, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not gonna go that fast here to kind of make sure we don't like run into this car at full speed here. But once we get that all done, that's the end of part one. And we're already at the limit here. Of course, I will do a basic edit of this video once I get everything recorded. But we've actually been recording for an hour and a half. So we got about another hour to go on the scenario. Okay, get the, re the brakes ready here. Got it. Lap, that should do it. Uh, actually, gonna get 50. All right, that should do it. 86. Oh, that's not that's an awesome shot. <laughs> We're at the depot here. All right, put that at about 53. Uh, about 50 there. And we should be good to the part. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's the end of this part. <laughs> oh boy, now we gotta make our way all the way back down to make our way all the way down to Rico, which is gonna be a one hell of a trip. That is 13 miles away. That is 13 miles. Wow. Okay, about 14 actually, technically, 14 miles. <laughs> 